Here we have an M.2 SSD drive that came in for data recovery. The customer dropped in the drive locally. He actually dropped in two drives, a good one and a bad one. He said that we can use the good one to fix the bad one, or we can use the good one as a backup for the bad one to back up the files onto. And this one is the Toshiba 512 PCI 3.1 M.2 SSD drive. First thing I want to do is plug the drive in right here. The drive is plugged in, but we did not hear a tone. And nothing is showing up on the computer. If we go to disk management, I also have a program running that tells me if I have anything plugged into the system and nothing. Yeah, nothing. All right, so let's disconnect the drive and take a look. I do not know if anybody worked on this drive before, but I do see the label peeled off a bit. It could be from heat. And we're going to take a closer look and see if we see anything obvious. And based on visual inspection, I do not see anything obvious. If we flip the board, there's nothing on back of the board. Nothing, absolutely nothing on back of the board. And that's good news because there's only so much that we can look into. Why don't we measure some of the caps at random in diode mode and see if we have a short anywhere? And we do not have a short. If we do discover a short, then we go to resistance mode and we make sure the component is not low resistance. One point five voltage drop. Right now it doesn't matter if I have red probe on the right or left. So we tested all the capacitors in this area, and we still have a few more to test. Whoa, whoa, look at this. We have a short right here. Let me test in resistance mode. And resistance mode, we are getting zero ohm short. That's it, that short. A that short on this component. That's not good. That's actually good because that may be the problem. <laughs> no short here. No short here. No short here. We're not hearing a beep. But if we test this guy right here, we get a beep. And we're done. I tested all the components, and it looks like we have a short circuit right here. So is it possible the capacitor is what's causing the short, or is it something else that's causing the short? Let me plug the drive in and see if we feel heat on this area of the board. Yeah, the drive, the drive is that cold. No heat at all. We're going to inspect the card under a thermal camera and see if we see any heat spots in this area, but I cannot feel anything. And right now, if you look under the thermal camera, what do we see? I have the drive right here. And like I said, no signs of heat anywhere on the board. Back of the board is empty and front of the board, the board is right here. No signs of heat anywhere on the board and no signs of heat on the short that we measured on the capacitor down here. So what's going on? If that capacitor was the component that was shortened to ground, then it would get hot. But no heat is showing up under the thermal camera. We're going to inject voltage at the capacitor and see what gets hot on the board. 
n of that short, the n of that short is currently out of stock. We should have those back in stock by possibly next week. It was very hard getting those in last time because the factory is not producing them. So they made 200 pieces for us, but they're gone. Now we have 300 pieces coming in. Since we are buying the quantity, they're producing those devices. One of the best voltage injection tools I've laid my hands on. We told the factory that this time we want the numbers bigger on the screen. You cannot see anything right now, but right here. I did a video on this. You can check out the end of that short video. Right now I can see all the numbers on the screen, no problem. But I told the factory I want the numbers bigger. Some of the numbers I do not care about make them smaller. And the numbers I care about make them bigger. So that's what they're going to be doing. So we should have the end of that short back in stock in maybe one week to 10 days. Hopefully not longer. Right now I have an extension cable plugged into the ground cable of the end of that short. So we can have a long cable and I'm going to plug this on the ground section of the drive. Right there, you see? I clipped it to the ground section of the drive. And now we're going to inject voltage with our red probe on top or bottom. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what exactly is shorting out. If it's the chip, we're going to say goodbye to this drive. But if it's anything else, let me grab our thermal camera. And we're going to switch to the thermal camera. We're going to inject voltage. And look at this. Look at this. Something is getting hot down here and not where I'm injecting voltage on the cap. So I inject voltage right here. And we see heat right here. Watch. Right there, the chip. The chip is what is shortened to ground. What is that chip? 2LZ. The good news is the customer did provide us with another drive. Let's take a look at the donor drive. And the donor drive is not the same. The donor drive is totally different. Different model and different everything. And we cannot grab the same chip from this donor drive. So what's the use? We can use it to back up the files, but we cannot use it for components. And right now, I do not know what the 2LZ is. You know what, before we figure out what 2LZ is, let's remove the chip and see if that will release our short. And if we zoom in some more to that chip, we do see a burn mark on bottom side of the chip. If I remove that chip, I do not know if this is a QFN chip or if it's a VGA chip. Why don't we try to remove the capacitor first? Just for the sake of precaution. Because it's easier to remove the cap and put it back. So why don't we start with the cap? And then we'll do the chip. If that chip is VGA, then we're not going to be able to put it back in case the problem is the cap. So that is the reason I started with the cap. Wait a minute. The problem was the capacitor. <laughs> the problem was the capacitor. We made the right decision. I injected voltage at the capacitor and the chip got hot. But the problem was the capacitor and not the chip. Voltage prefers the line with the lowest resistance and somehow it made its way all the way down to the chip. 
but the problem is really the capacitor and not the chip. It's a good thing that we did not remove that chip. If it's a QFM, we can solder it back, but BGA, we're going to have to either reball it or find another chip. Look at this. The short is gone. Wow. Wow, I cannot believe it. The short is gone. So if we measure right probe on ground, and look at this. Wow. The short is gone. Let's see if we can read files now. What's going on with the shorted caps? The last SSD drive we worked on for LA County Metro had a shorted capacitor on the board as well. Now we're going to have to replace this cap and we're going to grab that cap from an iPad's motherboard. I do not know the exact value of the cap, but it should not matter. We should still be able to recover data even with the wrong value cap. It has to be this size or this size here. So let's grab one of them. And the iPad I'm using is the 12.9 first gen. It was laying around right next to me. Is it the same size? And yes, it's exactly the same size. So let's go ahead and measure that capacitor again. We have ground here, we have ground here, and we have a normal reading on both sides of the cap. Awesome, awesome. Moment of truth, we're gonna have to plug it in and see if we are able to read anything now. And it looks like nothing is detected. Oh, wait a minute. USB device not recognized. Okay, so we got something. But USB device is not recognized. We got something. I unplugged and replugged the cable. See, USB device not recognized. Okay, let me try this on the Mac and see what happens. Hello, Sahla. Do you live today? I'm Jad. Let's go. Oh, thank you so much. Boba T. How lucky am I? The laptop is off. We're going to have to wait until it's back on. And the laptop is mirrored onto the screen. So let's log in. And we're going to plug the drive in. Okay, let's wait a minute. <laughs> Man, uh, big company and they sent us like seven devices. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Okay, got it. So the drive is not being recognized by Windows, not by a Mac. And at this point, it's one of the two issues, or maybe one of the three issues. It's either that we have the wrong value capacitor, which I highly doubt. A wrong value capacitor is not going to prevent the drive from working. Or we could have 
a problem with the 2LZ chip. And I do not know what that chip is. I'm going to have to look it up and see if we can get our hands on another one. So we can try and see if we can recover data for the customer. You have to understand that this capacitor is directly linked with the 2LZ chip and directly linked with the NAND chip. So either this is faulty or this is faulty. We can try to locate a 2LZ chip and see if that will solve the problem. If not, then we're going to deem the drive a no fix. I don't know, I thought I saw a crack on that chip. I think, is this a crack? I think I see something here. I don't know, I think I see something here. Or maybe I'm just looking too much into that chip. We could have a bad 2LZ chip or we could have a faulty NAND chip. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. We're going to call it off for this drive for now. I'll try and see if we can locate another 2LZ chip to at least try and see if that will help in any way, shape or form. Heat was generated from that chip when we injected voltage at the capacitor. So we may have a faulty 2LZ chip. Who knows? Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.